tell me that the guitar is going straight to television, though. Is the microphone still doing anything here? All right, give me a little bit more. Now, I'm going to move that mic. Give me a little more of this mic. go. Hi, everybody. It's your Uncle Wildcat. Here we go, gang.
at Studio 120 in Westfield, Massachusetts. Okay, let's go. It's not true. There's a rumor going around that I wrote this next song while I was looking at Emily Duff, but that's not true. But that is kind of how the song goes. It's called, If God Can Make That, No Wonder He's in Charge. For those of you who never seen us before, we got a new album out. Uh, it's called "She's Got More Faces Than a Deck of Cards." Not the friendliest song ever. Mm -hmm. This is the title cut for you right now. The beauty of your face is undeniable But the truth of your words is unreliable Your rival and a party starts to buzz But pretty is, that's pretty done I'd like to 
Caught up our new record. Look, the audience loves it. Were they? Did they exist? <laughs> this is also off the new record. We're gonna play a few things from that today. It's a pretty little slow blues called "I Wonder Who." You got it, Amho. One, two, three. <laughs>
to carry my love. <laughs> doing on time. We okay? Don't worry about time. Never worry about time. <laughs> oh, okay. Good deal. Uh, then give me tail pop, I guess. This song got as high as number eight on the blues charts, the weekly ones, RMR, Roots Music Radio. Uh, I think I got as high as number six in contemporary blues. This is an old thing of mine called Crunch Time. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Yeah, and 
ask that chick to dance. Don't hesitate if you can lay it on the back. Everybody knows that it's perfect. Get on that girl, don't have a walk. Soon it clouds call for alcohol. How about we let Emily do something she learned in jazz school? Yeah, you'd like that.
let's go. Alright. Another one off the new record. <laughs> couldn't go, you know, but they were wrong. Shout out to everybody out there in Facebook land, uh, including Joseph Morganfield, if he's watching. I had Dad's shirt on, but I got so sweaty moving equipment in here that I took it off. I'm wearing, this is the shirt that Alyssa Castine 
asked me, did we bring enough amplifiers to be louder than this shirt? Maybe she's watching. Hey, uh, we're going to finish up with uh, something that is the story of my life. It's called 51 Right and 49 Wrong. You know, but if you, if you did go down to the track and you knew for a fact you could get 51% right, you, you bet a lot of money. Back one time when, I, when they used to have horse racing in Northampton, I went down and I was betting the idiot system. If you bet $2 and lose, you bet 4 you bet four and you lose, you bet eight. I was up to $64 when it occurred to me that the racetrack closes. It's not guaranteed that you're eventually going to get your... Well, never mind. That's a fake. Double fake. Survival is success, that's what M. Jazz kept saying. A two step forward, one step back would be a heck of a day. The people hate my voice, but they love my sound. Yeah, 51 right.
righty then. Good enough? We, we, we have enough. If you want to play more, you're welcome to. Yeah, we're probably good. We're good. You All got right. enough. Okay. All right, and we are going to switch over for interviews. Interviews. All right. How old is that fellow? 55. Wow. <laughs> humbucker in it, and uh, that one broke getting thrown drunk in a car. I don't know why the cars get drunk and throw themselves in the truck, but they <laughs> apparently can break. So that's a PAF DiMarzio. Uh, these, this thing has Gibsons in it now. It's shiny. So. Do you play? No, I don't. I, I guess I've been around this all my life. Mm -hmm. I, I started playing keyboards, and then I found that I couldn't sing and play at the same time, so I went a different home. route. Yeah. Good, I need to sit. 
Ah, that's too bad. Oh, that's a good story to tell me. Yeah, we can tell that story. Because we're in another stupid contest now. This one I have absolutely no business, but I'm annoyed. Sirius XM, I think in my whole career, has played. Does that work for your sound effect machine? Is that what you play? Yeah. Um, maybe you didn't play everything that's on there. Yeah, because I'm going to... What's his first name? Cat. Cat? Wildcat? Yeah, oh, it's just Cat. Okay. Yeah, Cat. We want to call him Cat. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Jay. Basically, uh, I think I heard bass doesn't want anything to do with this, so we're going to put sax, vocal, percussion. Yep. That works. Uh, Living blues is where we want to be. Oh, speaking of what happens when you put out a record during an international pandemic. <laughs> Let's do the mic check uh, right now. I'll do it. Uh, so uh, I'm coming off a 257s and a 58 over here. That should sound all right. All right. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Um, I was told not interested in the interview. Okay, so uh, I'm on one microphone right now. Check, check. Okay, good level. Okay, I'm on another microphone right now. Check, check. And I'm on another microphone right now, another 57. Check, check. And JP, okay. check, Jay? hey, check, hey. One, okay. two. All I'm going to have to do is set up uh, camera looks and then we'll be set. All right. Hello. Uh, we want to cross out the songs. Oh, cross out the songs that we did not yeah. actually play. Hello, Facebook land. This, we this last Thank week. you for your patience. We will be with you yeah, shortly. You want a V3 when you're playing out? Um, if you, I can find you a video from a long time ago mm -hmm. of us having uh, Ted Word sitting in with us. Because right. he used to leave his V3 in... Uh, You know the story about. Uh, Who, me? I, I tried. I hit the focus button. You know the story about uh, we are the world, we are the children? I'm in all the way. And Quincy Jones says to all the superstars remember, we're all in this together. Leave your egos at the door. And I don't think it's really true, but people said uh, that Diana Ross said, What ego? I'm above that. <laughs> doesn't break the camera. We're doing yeah. good. We're good. When were you on uh, we 22? Was that a while ago? We make us look better, though. What? Was that on a while ago you were on 22? Yeah, quite a while ago. Yeah. Uh, you know when it was? It was not the... Was it the Japanese nuclear disaster? We did a benefit for... Oh, wow, yeah. Disasters. It was about seven disasters ago. What's he say? 
Just talk more? What? He wants me to I talk more? I this one they're actually saying at the microphone. Well, get him on the microphone. I'm sorry, are we trying to go here? Come on, Em. Save me, baby. All right, I'm standing at the microphone. Look at me go. Uh, well, at the microphone, look. We, we can go with it and have them j join us uh, at as some they, point. As they do, yeah. So my guess is you've got lots of stories anyway. I so. do. i got a ton of stories. Yeah. That's... Em's not comfortable doing it either. Sure she is, yes. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, man. Well, Man. otherwise, we just talk about you, so... One, one little story. One little story. The Howlin' Wolf story, and you laugh, and then you can run away. How's that? Yeah. Uh, why, don't we get, why don't we get going, and then uh, if okay. they want to join in, they can, okay? You can... Yeah, so, yeah. All right. Uh, what I'll do is I'll keep these looks as is. Okay. If somebody wants to join in, yeah. use camera five to uh, the other mic. Yeah, camera that makes five. It, what about that camera makes five? it easy. All right. We ready? What a beautiful studio... Uh, I hope it looked half as good at home as it looks on those monitors. I think Jeez, it did. We were really impressed. Thank you so much for having us. And this is, uh, well, let's, uh, let's do an opening. Oh, sorry. All right. No, it's okay. It, he can mix and match everything. I'll thank him again. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. All right. In three, two. Hi, everyone. This is Jay Pagluca with Studio 120 Sessions. Today we have Wildcat O'Halloran in studio, uh, and the cat is here. Hey, how are, how are you? you? Hey, thanks for coming in. Oh, thanks so much for having us. What a gorgeous studio. Uh, looked really great. I can't wait to get home and, and see on the television, but if it looked half as good as it looked uh, from where we were standing, it was hard not to get distracted. We well, looked what, better what, than we really were. Why don't you introduce the band, although many of them have, are, sure. are missing in action. On drums, we got... Uh, Mark Schwienard, who's not on any of the... Oh, there he is. Wave, Mark. Look at that. <coughs> Kathy Peterson uh, bailed out. Kathy, um, when she's not with us, has gone back to her former job, which, believe it or not, is emergency room uh, doctor. Okay. And uh, in anticipation of the crisis. Well, thank you. But she her says, for... fortunately, where we live hasn't been that critical yet, but she's... Uh, she took off to get back home. I think she has a shift at the hospital. Well, certainly and she's thank afraid her they're going to say she doing. was promoting gatherings, although I'm sure you noticed there was no No, we are, we are socially uh, distanced We're here distanced. in the studio. And, and behind Emily glass, Duff is too. wandering around here someplace. I'm going to try to get her to come out here because it makes us more photogenic. <laughs> M was on a cruise ship when the virus hit. She was here at Christmas. We did the record fast and, and, and dirty. Uh, got that together. She went back and took a stint on the cruise ship. She was supposed to come home for us to go on tour. I don't know if tour is going to happen now or if everything's going to be canceled. A bunch of stuff is certainly canceled. But she was on a boat, and she didn't, they didn't get the coronavirus, but they had been to Asia, so no one would let them land. So they're floating around for 62 days. They're in the Indian Ocean for a while. Then they go through the Suez Canal. We started calling her the Pirate Queen because she was daring the pirates to attack the cruise ship. She ended up in the Mediterranean, and eventually they let them off in Gibraltar, which is a British possession, flew them to England, from England back home. She quarantined for 14 days near the airport in Boston, and I went and got her, brought her home uh, in time for this and a couple other little things that we've... Well, how, you know, how did you all, let's start with how did you all meet here? Uh, you guys, uh, just an incredible combination. Oh, uh, thank you for saying so. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, so if I tell a lot of olden days stories, some of these guys We're going to get to those. We're going to be ask. in those, but um, Emily was, uh, we came out of rehearsal, and there was a little basket on the stoop with a baby in it, and the baby had a little bottle and a little tiny sex. No, that's not really true. I met Emily at a jam in Northampton, and then her band, uh, her kid band, which was called The Raft, and my band did a show together in, I want to say Florence. And uh, in case her parents are watching, I drank most of the Jameson, but they didn't have any Jameson left in that. Where club. did she? Where did she learn? Where did she start? Playing she went the to sax? Westfield State, right here in Westfield. Did she? Okay. She lives in one of those hill towns where it's probably snowing, even though it's summer. Um, I always get them mixed up. Is it uh, Beckett or is it uh, Huntington? I don't remember. But one of those towns where it's where they say you got to go to a house on top of a mountain, 
in, and I'm like, you said on top of a mountain twice if it's in Blanford. But in any event, but she lives in one of those towns, and she went to Westwood State, then she got her master's at UMass, and we started calling her Dr. Luscious because we needed to have more respect for her after she got an advanced degree. Now, that's a confident sax you've got. Yeah, uh, she's awesome. Uh, so she's absolutely uh, incredible. And, and the, the, Mark I can... was friends with a bass player that I was playing with. I was hosting a jam in Chicopee, and let's just say it wasn't the best, most musical jam ever. Um, and I uh, might have been drinking a lot of Jameson at that, too. And Mark uh, came up and played one night, and uh, I'm like, hey, this guy has actually good time, unlike the guy that brought him. And uh, so uh, I eventually recruited him, and Kathy came up to me at my jam in Northampton that I used to host in the bowling alley for a long time. And that was a good jam, and uh, she was in fast company, but she came up and she played, and she did okay. And she came up to me afterwards, and she's tired of this story. Good thing she left. But she came up to me afterwards and she said, I just moved here from Chicago. And I only like blues. Are there any bands around here that play that? And I was like, dude. Dude, you're hurting me in my heart right now. Are there any bands around here that play that? So we scooped her up. Now, this has been the lineup for about four or five years now. Now, how long um, you been doing? You've been in this for quite a while. <laughs> People don't live to be as old as I am. Well, I'm probably not far off. So when did you first pick up My that guitar? My first public performance was uh, at the reunion, at, at the, the anniversary of Cathedral High School, which was 1967 or 68. Okay. I was a Panther. My father taught at Cathedral, so I didn't have a lot so, of choice. We go, we're saying go Panthers? Yeah, that's right. All right. I was a Panther. Um, and... Um, I've been playing in the Pioneer Valley. I mean, I went on the road a little bit in the 70s with a band called Crosstown Blues Band. We backed up John Lee Hooker a few shows and uh, James Cotton and James Montgomery. And oh. Oh. Then uh, when I was, I had a restaurant in, near UMass in Sunderland for a while, and I was working 90 hours a week there and trying to play, and I amazed I'm still alive. But. Now, you, you, uh, before we got on uh, to uh, the interview part, I heard you talking about the history of your guitar that you had. Where, oh, where? yeah, that 65 Fender Esquire. Esquire was a telly that didn't have a pickup down by the neck. When I got it, it had a Gibson pickup in it, but somehow the Gibson picket, pickup got broken, getting thrown in the truck drunk. Which I don't understand how the guitars get drunk and jump in the truck like that, but eventually that, so that's a DiMarzio in there, but that's a 1965. I paid $170 for that. I was using the little, uh, it's like a Chinese knockoff of a Laney or a Blues Junior. I was using that little amp today, but in my car I got a 1966 Supro Thunderbolt. They went out of business in 68, I think. They're back now, of course. Now they're vintage, so I can't afford one now. But I bought that in the used furniture store for $90. So I tell people, I got $260 tied up in music. I can't quit until I make my money back. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't made it yet. We, but we keep trying. Keep yeah. trying. Yeah. The, now, you mentioned some of the bands that you've opened for, played for, yep. uh, uh -huh. you know, at, at the risk of dropping a lot of names. I understand that list is kind of long. It is pretty long. Tell me when to stop. I have op I've been in the backup band for Bo Diddley, because, you know, he would pick up a local band. I've done that. James Cotton, towards the end, was losing his voice, so he didn't want to do a whole electric set, but he wanted me to back him for, like, the last three exciting numbers. Uh, so I, I've opened for him a bunch of times. James, hope he's up in heaven praying for us. Uh, Greg Allman, the Stray Cats, Charlie Musselwhite, John Lee Hooker. Um, uh, Sun Seals, uh, Coco Montoya. Has it been mostly here in the Northeast? Or have you, or yeah, have you we escaped? go out to the Midwest. Kathy's friends with an older uh, blues singer named Lindsey um, Alexander. He's got a new record out by Live at Roses. And we go out to see him in Chicago. We usually do like Albany, Buffalo, Cleveland, Chicago, 
and then either um, Milwaukee last year or Indianapolis. Last year, I think we did both, and it was just a lot of driving. But yeah, we usually stop and see Lindsay. If you look on trip. YouTube, there's yeah. something from his jam with us playing, and there's some with us playing behind him. Sounds and like he and Kathy were trip. friends, so he says, let's do that thing that we used to do, <laughs> and counts off, and Kathy had no idea what he was talking about. Uh, but uh, yeah. we got... We did it pretty good behind him. Now, so. how, I, I uh, had read also that you have quite a few albums over the years. How, yeah, what's the total f- number that you've done? I think, I, think uh, the, I had a guy interviewing me this morning for Big City Rhythm and Blues magazine, and he's known me a long time, so, but he thought I was you know, a wise guy. I don't remember how many. I really don't, literally. I think it's, we say 15 CDs. There's some vinyl back there, and I know we had a bunch of stuff on cassette back in the day, yeah. which was probably stupid. But. How many tunes have you had on the charts? I, you mentioned on the that. charts. Yeah. Out, oh, last week, the Massachusetts charts, we had two albums on there at the same time. Somebody brought back the one from last year. But we've gotten as high as number six on the singles chart in contemporary blues. On the big blues chart, we got as high as number eight with this one. This being a pandemic, I've been at home uh, calling up DJs. They're at home. They're not doing anything. Some of them can't get into their stations. So I worked the record real hard. But the last record was in the charts, the RMR charts, for over a year. The new one's been three months now, March, around St. Patrick's Day. It came out just before the world closed. Our CD release party was supposed to be at Theodore's (laughs) the day Massachusetts closed. Oh, that's a shame. said... Do you still want to play? No one will be here. Well, I, I, I got to imagine I'm that like, nah, we're, we're going to open up again at yeah, some point. Hope. And yeah, and I, I can imagine that uh, all of us in the business, it's with one, you know, hands in the business somehow, we all want to play. And we yeah. appreciate you coming in and, yeah, and spending we'll time with us here. Somehow. We're, go- we're going up to the top of New Hampshire. Uh, for the 3rd of July, we're playing in Littleton, New Hampshire. I know right where that okay. is. Yes. The road signs say, this way to Nashua, this way to Canada. Yeah. So <laughs> it's way up there. But well, that's great. Now, I wish you the best uh, of scared. luck up there. And, you know, and, um, New Hampshire was one of the first states to open. So uh, yeah, yeah, I think hoping. that'll be good. It's working out. Yeah. Um, so far, so good here. Everybody stay safe at home. And uh, hey. thank you so again for having us here. Uh, we've done a couple of live streams at my house where we just put the tablet there and hope that we're yeah. even on on camera. Yeah. And this is going to be way better. Thanks. Well, folks, thanks for your Wildcat O'Hanneran. Uh, uh, there's the cat. The yeah. Cat. Thanks very Mark much. We got Mark to speak for a second. We're going to get him to say anything. No. He's hiding in the corner. All right. Well, thank She's you for thank, right. you thank you for all everybody. of you. All right. Have a great day.